Hello everyone, Reefer Gill here. I'm super excited to bring you guys this video, mostly for myself. This system has been about seven months in the making and I'm finally to the point where I'm gonna start preparing the system for some salt water, an aquascape, and sand. So before I actually get into the video, I wanna thank each and every one of you. You, 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 and you for the tremendous amount of support that you've shown this channel. I'm creeping up on 11,000 subscribers as of this recording right here. So I wanna thank each and every one of you. I really appreciate it. It's really encouraging and motivates me to continue doing the videos. So thanks. Okay, so obviously the system is filled with water. This is simply just tap water. I brought the hose back in. I did do a leak test video. Then I drained all the water. I you know, dried up the tank and the sump. And then I revisited that video and got scared all over again. So the last thing I want to do is push this tank up against the wall and fill it up with salt water, sand, and my aquascape only to have another leak. That would be just detrimental. I'd have to tear apart the entire tank to pull the tank away from the wall and fix that leak. So what I did is I refilled it with some tap water, ran it for about a week or so, and I also took that opportunity to go over my apex and make sure all the uh, pieces of equipment that are connected to it are dialed in. I did remove the MP40s if you noticed. I'm running the Maxi Spec Gyres XF230s with their own controller. Um, but we'll go ahead and start preparing the system. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to drain five gallons at a time into a five gallon bucket. And then I'm going to mark off the side here on the tank to show where five uh, gallon increments of water have been displaced from the tank. That way when I do uh, water changes, I have a good idea of how much water I'm pulling out based on the markings on the side of the tank. I'll stop it, you know, 15, 20 gallons, stop it, and then fill it back up with some fresh salt water later down the line. So since I have it filled up now, I'm gonna go ahead and take that opportunity and uh, remove five gallons at a time. I'm gonna go ahead and put this uh, hose in. I'm gonna clamp it down. We're going to go old school here and siphon it out. Hopefully I don't have any water spills. And there we go. Water spill. Okay, that was dumb. Okay, that was dumb. Let's try that again. It's kind of awkward working this hose here. I should have put it in the dryer to make it a little bit more flimsy. And again, I'm just doing this because it's going to make it a lot simpler in the future to do water changes. If I would only want to do five gallon water change, I know how much water let out, uh, you know, all the way up to, I think I'll do 30 uh, gallons of water change, maybe even more, we'll see. So right here, I'm just waiting for it to fill up to five gallons. And it's right about there. So here I'm just using my labeler to mark five gallons for the first change. The next time I empty out five gallons, I'll make a label for 10 gallons. Then the next one will be 15, 20, and I'll go by five gallon increments. And I'll just put this on the side of the glass. So right here, I'm taking the water line, getting the five gallon marker. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put this right below the line. And then I'm gonna repeat this a few times and we'll come back to the side of the tank and I'll show you what I did. And this is the final results. You can see it starts off at five gallons and works its way all the way down, which is 40 gallons. Don't know when I'd ever need to change that many gallons of water it would be an indication for sure that something is very wrong with my system if I ever needed to dump out that much water. But it was a one-time thing that I can do since I'm draining this whole tank. The rest of the water I'm going to drain using my plumbing that I've installed in the back of the tank to drain water out. Now the one thing I do want to mention here is if you try this, and of course nano tanks, you could do this as well. Instead of five gallons, maybe you only do one gallon at a time. But if you ever move your returns up or down, it may throw off your numbers here after you've done it. So uh, after you've done this, just be very careful to not move your returns. And if you do, just try to put them back in the general area that they were in. Now here's the drain in the lower left corner of the tank. That's what I'll be using to drain water out of the system for water changes. Right behind that same drain is this gate valve that I'll be using to turn to open up the water to allow it to drain out. It'll then go down that hose to that second ball valve on the other end of the tank. This ball valve on the other end of the tank was put there as a security measure in case I couldn't close that gate valve while the water was draining, I could run over here and shut it off 
quickly on this side of the tank. This is also the same side of the tank where I've marked off how many gallons of water I've drained out of the tank. Open up this gate valve. No water should drain, or if it is, it's just gonna be that amount that fills up the hose in between the gate valve and the ball valve because the ball valve on the other side is closed. See some bubbles, get air in there. I'll go ahead and open this up. I don't know if you can hear it, but the water is running. Now I did have soft silicone tubing here before, but the soft silicone tubing collapsed on itself due to the vacuum effect that happens inside with the rushing water. I don't see the vinyl tubing having any issues so far. Everything looks good. And this water is draining into a utility sink down in the garage. I've shown that several times in other videos. I do have a video up right now on this water changing system. I'll put that in the description down below. So here the water is just draining down the drain. And you can see I'm going to have a good couple inches right below the drain and the bottom of the glass to empty out. Okay, so I'm getting to the bottom here. I'm going to go ahead and put the siphon into the sump. The rest of the water that's in the display, I'll just soak up with some towels and get everything out of here. I'm going to try to get as much of this top, uh, tap water out of here before I introduce salt water. All right, I'll put the uh, siphon into the sump here. So the really good news is that there were no leaks after a week of running the system with tap water. Like I mentioned earlier, I just, uh, after watching that video again, where all the leaks occurred during my water test, I got scared. So I did another week long water test and everything's dialed in. So everything's good to go. Super excited to get sand, rock, salt water into this tank. It's a long time coming for sure. Okay, now that I have the display tank in the sump cleaned up and dried out, I thought it'd be a good idea to test out my Vectra M1 pump to see if it has enough flow to push water from the salt mixing station downstairs all the way up through the wall and into the display tank. Now I did already calibrate this. When you turn it on, you have to calibrate it. So I know it's set to full power. I did do a quick test run on it and it seemed to have pushed some water into the display tank. At the time it had tap water in it already and it was maxed out with water. So I didn't let it run. Um, now I'm gonna go upstairs now that the tank is dry and empty of water, I'll be able to actually see the flow uh, or lack thereof from the M1 pump going into the display tank. Okay, this is gonna be the valve to control the amount of flow that goes into the display tank from the Vectra M1 pump. Right now I have it completely shut off, so I'm gonna go over to the Apex and turn it on. Okay, we're at my Apex tablet. I'm gonna look for the Vectra M1 pump. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn the valve on, see what happens here. Well, that was uneventful. The valve is completely open. Whoop. All right. Oh, man. Thought I had a dud. I'm actually turning it down a little bit. I want to fill up the... Uh, container here too much. I don't want to spill water after I've already dried it, but it's working. It's about, um, I'll go ahead full blast real quick. That's full blast. Very happy. Very, very happy. Okay. That was actually pretty fun. I emptied out the bucket and I'm going to go ahead and turn it back on again. Yes, sir. The Vectra M1 pump, pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. That's full blast. So that'll fill up my tank in no time. Very happy with those results. Again, it's about a seven, 15 to 17 foot ride for the water all the way upstairs and through a bunch of 90s and stuff. So that's pretty impressive for that Vectra M1 pump. The next step in preparing my tank is hanging my H380 light. I think I'm going to go ahead and try this gooseneck that I bought. I'm not sure if I'm going to like it or not. Uh, for the first, the first thing here is it's making contact with this PVC clamp and with water running through there. My concern is that this is going to cause vibration for one. And secondly, 
the gooseneck itself wants to push itself out this way which would cause the light to spill out into the living room area i do have doors on this cabinet however the doors are see-through so that i could see into the display and with this powerful light if it's aimed out this way it's not going to work my wife will not put up with that so i'm going to go ahead and put the mounting bracket on the light itself and then just simply screw it into this these threads here and it's supposed to be mounted one to two feet off the surface of the water um, so i'll have to make adjustments after i mount this light onto this gooseneck my other option is to forego the gooseneck and hang the uh, light from the top of the stand with a, a piece of chain or something simple and just let it hang but we'll see here's a quick look at the h380 light with that mounting solution screwed into place just screw in the light here. I don't know. What do you guys think of this gooseneck here? Have anybody use it, have problems with it, they like it? I guess I'll find out myself pretty soon here. Here's a connection here. I think what I'll do is I'll just run that cord through the gooseneck and out the back of the tank. It is now nighttime. This is what the H380 Kessel light looks like with the lights off in the living room. This is where we spend most of our evenings watching TV. So I just wanted to kind of test run this light at night to see how much light is spilling out of the sump area and it's actually not as bad as I thought it looks worse on camera that's what it actually looks like with the uh, naked eye but when I back up that red turns into white and that's not what I'm looking at in real life so this is what the light looks like and um, just to give you guys an idea how powerful this light is by looking at it at night not that bad apex cabinet in it up here i have the controller for the core pump that's the main head unit for the apex 2016 the eba 832 i have the dose pumps here i still have to connect them to the dual reservoirs by neptune systems since i'm just barely getting into the cycle stage i don't have to worry about this right now the controller for the two gyri pumps WXM controller for the radion lights and the MP10 that will be on the nano tank and then this is the FMM module and to that I have connected two leak detectors that I've placed in strategic areas of the tank as well as the Apex auto top off unit which is inside the sump right now. Above the Apex cabinet I have this tablet here that sits permanently on the Apex screen to allow me to come here and make whatever adjustments I need to do. Underneath the nano tank, I have a second EB832, which is coming in pretty handy to plug in those items that won't reach all the way on the opposite side of the tank where the apex stand is located. I also have an ALD module. It's an older module. This has been replaced by the FMM module, but I did have this module and I connected yet a third leak detector here. So if it senses any water in here this leak detector's primary job is just to shut off the solenoid as it won't catch any leaks that is coming from the main system because it's isolated in its own cabinet and then i have two auto top off pumps in here the black one is the apex peam up and the white one is the tune z for the nano tank and the black one is for the main display so those still need to be hooked up with the hoses and routed properly. And then I have a PM2 back here, and that's gonna be for the nano tank to monitor the pH and temperature. Now both of my returns are using these random flow generators by Creative Aquatics, or Vivid Creative Aquatics, I'm sorry. Their link will be down below if you're interested. These are really neat because they just attach themselves to regular lock line. You can get them in any size you want. My nano tank has a pair of these as well in half inch size. During the water test, I did put my hand in front of it and you could definitely feel the difference in the water flow. It definitely does generate a random flow. The neat thing about this is it doesn't have any moving parts. You would think there'd be a fan or something moving around in there as the water passed through it, but there's not, which is ideal because that means there's nothing that can break on this. Just by its design alone, it creates a random flow. So I'm excited to see what that'll do for the corals once I get the system up and running. And I do realize 
that I said don't mess with your returns by moving them up or down after you've marked off the side of the tank with how many gallons you've removed from the tank because it'll throw off those numbers. However, my system has check valves on both sides of the return lines. So it doesn't matter where my nozzles are pointed, it's gonna stop the water uh, at the same point every time. And the only reason I have these check valves is so I can contain as much water in the display itself so that I could do larger water changes uh, rather than allowing all the water to drain out into the sump area and uh, not allow me access to that water, that extra water that has been displaced into the sump. So instead of that, it's all contained in the display tank to allow me to do larger water changes. I am not uh, depending on these check valves whatsoever to prevent a flood in my sump. If I didn't have these check valves or if they failed, my sump would be able to handle that amount of water coming out of the display without flooding. This is the Apex breakout box. The only thing that's currently controlling is the door switch. So when I open and close the door and the magnetic uh, sides break apart, then the LED lights inside will light up. It also will light up if there's a problem with the tank. It'll be a visual cue to me that something's amiss. So the lights will light up if there are issues. There's one of the leak detectors there. And the reason I put a leak detector there is because I'm going to have my dual reactor here for the carbon and GFO. So that's a likely source of a leak. That's why I put it right in there. And also it would catch any kind of leaks coming from the sump as well. This is the second leak detector there. I have it in the back of the tank to catch any drips or leaks that may be caused by the plumbing in the back of the tank. Also place it right next to this RODI line that's feeding my ATO reservoir. If that RODI line starts to leak, that leak detector will pick up the leak and send the signal to the apex to shut off the RODI line via this apex solenoid there at the bottom. In addition to shutting off the solenoid, it'll also shut off any vital equipment that's running in the tank, such as the return pump, the reactors, and anything else that can potentially be causing a leak to shut down and stay shut down until I get home and figure it all out. This is the Neptune Systems Auto Feeder. I have it programmed to feed the fish at 5 p.m. every single day. Right now, I have it only set to one rotation, meaning that the drum will come out, rotate once, and go back in, and that'll be it. As I get more fish, I'll make it uh, rotate uh, one more time or maybe two more times to feed the additional uh, mouths that will be in the tank. The auto feeder, when it goes off at five o'clock, the return pump will slow down to the point that no more water is going down the overflows. So all the food will stay within the tank and the gyre pumps, I've also programmed that controller to slow them down to I think it was 10 or 5% at 5 p.m. So everything will kind of be contained within the display tank and allow the fish and cleanup crew members to grab a nibble of any of the pellets that come out of this. I also purchased and connected this display unit. Unfortunately, it is sold separately with the 2016 Apex, whereas before it came standard with the Apex Classic. I find these to be very convenient because whenever it comes time to do maintenance on the system, I can just walk up here and push a button and shut down all those pieces of equipment that I need to be turned off with the push of one button. Also, it serves as a backup to the tablet itself because if the internet goes down or the tablet's acting up or the internet's acting up, this will always be up and running and I can depend on it to turn off whatever pieces of equipment I need to stop for whatever maintenance I'm gonna do. Also, the Apex will send me a text alert when something is amiss. In addition to that text alert, this, having this display unit also gives me the opportunity to have an audible alarm here within the house. So if I'm in bed sleeping, this thing is going to sound off an uh, audible alarm and wake me up where maybe that text alert would not have done so. So very convenient to have one of these. Um, and uh, also, obviously, it displays critical pieces of information. All that information you're seeing right now is way off because I haven't calibrated any of the probes. I will be running the, these two Radeon G4 lights over the 100 gallon system. I did win a light fixture and an RMS mount at a 2016 Magna event, so don't hate on me for that. But I only had to pay for one of these lights, which was a great deal for me. 
Uh, these lights are very easily controlled through the Apex via the WXM module. I really, really like these lights a whole lot. So I can't wait to see what kind of coil growth I get out of them. I realized that was a longer than usual video that I put out. So if you stuck with it all the way to the end, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Just wanted to give you guys a walk through the system before I go ahead and aquascape it. If you guys are new to the channel, I'll appreciate that subscription. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Also follow me on Instagram for real time updates. Thanks for watching.